football fans from all across the world. This is a showcase, a top five showcase in the NJCAA. I'm Hank Ambrose with you. If you thought last week was a treat, this is a five-star meal. Hank Ambrose with you for your play-by-play -play coverage on YouTube.com slash Triton Nation all throughout today's coverage. Triton's going to be wearing the dark blue, the white bottoms, Hutchinson in the all-white uniforms, and there goes your Iowa Central Triton C taking the field. It's another beautiful day to play football at Dodger Stadium in Fort Dodge, Iowa. Let's get right into this thing. Like I said, a top five matchup. Iowa Central Tritons recently knocked off Garden City. They opened their season getting the best of independence. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. They head into the game today at home, ranked at number five in the nation. Hutchinson is ranked at number one, and I got some beef about that ranking at number one. I do, and I'll get into that in just a little bit as well. But as you can see on your screen right there, the Tritons are leaving the locker room. They're taking the field. There's Andre Porter giving out the high fives, the dance team, the cheerleader squad. And everyone else is here to root on the Iowa Central Tritons, uh, not just Iowa Central ha having a big day in the state of Iowa, but all of football fans in Iowa. It's the Cyhawk game as well. Iowa State Cyclones taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, I'll provide some updates throughout the contest if I see any score changes. But for now, it's all about Iowa Central football. There goes those Triton fans standing on their feet. And the big try rush. Here we go. And as always, Jeremy Smith's band conducting as great as ever, ready to see these Tritons perform, hosting the number one team in the nation. Let's start off with the report. We'll begin with last week where Iowa Central remained unbeaten as they got the best of, like I said just a moment ago, the Garden City Bronkbusters, who were previously ranked at number five. Tritons were ranked at number nine in the nation heading into that matchup. Uh, some of the highlights include a 24-yard passing touchdown from Silverstein to Mario Sanders with 2 minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Congolo Buenincamba returned the extra point to give the Tritons a 7-0 lead to lead the way. Garden City ended up scoring a touchdown with 10 seconds remaining in the first to bring the game to a close 7-6 in favor of Iowa Central at the end of the first. The Bronkbusters scored one touchdown for six unanswered points in the second quarter making the lead 12-7 at half. Early in the third quarter, the Bronkbusters scored again on a 75-yard touchdown just 12 seconds into the second half of the two-point conversion to take Garden City up 20-7. Iowa Central answered with a 35-yard passing touchdown from Justin Silverstein to Mario Sanders to bring the Bronkbuster lead to six points. That made it 20-14. Sanders then closed out the third period with 20 seconds remaining in the quarter and a 16-yard touchdown to tie the game at 20 a piece. The Tritons then went on to score 10 more unanswered points in the fourth quarter to win 30 to 20. Silverstein led the Tritons in passing with 100% of the yardage completed by himself. Uh, some more notable stats from last week. Heading into this week, uh, Aaron Warren named the ICAC Defensive Player of the Week as he made some huge plays against them. Three tackles, but I'd say more importantly, two interceptions from Aaron Warren. Uh, the first interception is what changed the tide of the game, the momentum of the game to give the Tritons the better hand moving forward to eventually tie it. And then his second interception of that game against Garden City is what sealed the deal and allowed the Tritons to clock out the rest of the contest. I expect him to have a huge game today. Uh, Iowa Central Tritons X receiver. Wide receiver one, Mario Sanders, is your ICAC wide receiver athlete of the week. Uh, just a great, great athlete, great start to his Triton career. Uh, has played two games for the Iowa Central Tritons, and he's back-to-back -back conference wide receiver of the week. Just shy of 100 yards against Garden City. Uh, he also went on to have three total receiving touchdowns. Six catches shy of 100 yards for three receiving touchdowns, as I mentioned a moment ago. On the season, Sanders has 12 catches for 201 yards and four scores. Uh, as we move forward to another athlete of the week, it's Coleman Miller, who's the ICAC Special Teams Athlete of the Week, uh, but 
almost made it on the list as defensive player of the week as well. Sophomore punter also plays outside linebacker for IC3. With his leg, three times he pinned number five Garden City inside their 20-yard line to give Iowa Central an edge in the field position game. In five kicks, he totaled 218 yards for an average of 43 and a half yards per kick. He longed was a 68-yard bomb. And defensively, he had four tackles, one sack, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. Colvin Miller going to be another big impact player for Iowa Central today. Uh, going through some of the team stats that I have to note from Iowa Central, uh, the penalties, 21 so far just through two games. He's, they, they've given up 196 total yards. Uh, their time of possession, really, really low. Only 15 minutes they average per game, which, uh, you know, if you take quarter by quarter by basically 15 minutes, that's nearly just a fourth of the game they spend on offense. Their defense has a lot of time on the field. Uh, that's something that could wear them out, especially this early on in the season. Uh, I'd like to see the offense be able to milk the clock more and more as we move through the midseason. Not there yet, but moving ever so slightly. Your Triton player stats, Justin Silverstein, 39 and 70, uh, 39 completions out of 79 attempts. That's good for a 49 percentage. He has 451 passing yards and seven passing touchdowns. That's good enough for a top five placement in the entire NJCAA uh, superstar we have at quarterback in Justin Silverstein. As we'll pause the football talk for now and we'll get into the play-by-play. Congolo Ben and Kamba is set up to kick off. You'll see Iowa Central right there kicking off with the dark blue on top and the white bottoms. Hutchinson has the white from head to toe with red jerseys. A deep kick from Congolo pins it to the five-yard line moving forward towards the 15 where he'll be dragged back, back, back. Well, they will stop the play right there towards the 15-yard line. Great start on special teams for the Iowa Central Tritons. Some of the highlighted players on the defensive end for the Iowa Central Tritons. Leading the way in tackles, Trayvon Taylor. He has six solo tackles, uh, nine total on the season. Right behind him is Ajay Russell, Colvin Miller, and Jamal Spaye all with seven as well. This linebacking core is very dominant from the Iowa Central Tritons and those big fellows up front help out from that end. Uh, no fly zone in the secondary for the Iowa Central Tritons. They don't give up a lot of touchdowns or haven't so far this season and uh, especially in the passing game. Here we go, starting with play number one an inside zone for Hutchinson. That is gonna be good for maybe a gain of three, it looks like from their starting tailback. Getting the start today at tailback will be the number three from Hutchinson, which is, uh, which is Brandon Epton Jr. Brandon Epton Jr. lines to the left side of starting quarterback Samari Collier, who is a true freshman. He'll fire a seven yard out route outside. Looks like it may be short though of the first down line to gain. Let's see where they place him. I believe it's gonna be a third and short and it will be a third and short, a third and one to be precise, set up on the 28 yard line for Hutchinson. 14 minutes remain in this very first quarter. We just got started with the top five rivalry showcase in the entire junior college and the Triton sideline is loud, they're proud, and they're cheering on their D. Here's another inside zone. The second time we've seen this already uh, and that's gonna be enough for a Hutchinson first down. 13 minutes, 30 seconds remain. I told you in the pregame that I have some beef with Hutchinson being ranked at number one. Uh, one of the biggest reasons they're ranked at number one, multiple national championship appearances, just like last year, they were runner-up in the entire NJCAA in Division I football, lost to ICAC rivals of the Tritons, Iowa Western, dominating vis victory for the Reavers. There's a swing pass complete, going to have enough for a 15 yard gain get them to the 45 yard line first and 10 for Hutchinson uh, but like I said uh, continuing the talk despite all of that and despite Hutchinson putting up impressive stats through two games so far in the season 
they've not played quality opponents at all. They open up their season at Navarro College, 42 to six, uh, and then they open uh, opened up uh, their first contest in Iowa last week at Ellsworth Community College, 72 to seven. Neither of those teams quality opponents shouldn't put them up in the rankings, but just because of preseason polls, they have them staying at uh, the number one spot. Uh, throwing away Triton fans wanting a penalty thrown against quarterback Lamar Collier, but they're not going to get it. Uh, it'll be a third down and nine from the 46-yard line. Hutchinson in the all-white uniforms moving from right to left on your radio dial. 12 minutes, 27 seconds remain for the Blue Dragons on offense. See what the Tritons come up in for their second third down conversion stop of the game. They're sending five on the line and six back. Looks like Four defensive backs are in the set. Just one Mike linebacker. No one on the quarterback spy. Quarterback draw. There goes Collier for a pickup of a first down. Gaining another 10 yards after that. A gain of near 20 for Collier. Something to watch out for for this Hutchinson school. They have a lot of players that do a variety of different things. It's not like they just scout uh, players that are good at one thing. Power running for one. Uh, or uh, maybe it's deep passing. No, nothing like that. If you're going to be a Hutchinson Blue Dragon, you're going to have to do a whole lot of things. And that shows in the NFL talent that they uh, graduated from Hutchinson Community College. I want to run through some of the Hutchinson players that are currently in the NFL or some NFL greats. Uh, we're going to start with first-round pick from 2019 for the Green Bay Packers, Devontae Wyatt who is their best defensive lineman right now and uh, possibly the best in the NFC North right now. Devontae Wyatt, uh, a former Hutchinson Blue Dragon, also a former Blue Dragon star running back Alvin Kamara, who was uh, the 2019 Rookie of the Year for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, you know that name very well. Kyle Wilson, uh, who has spent his time with the Philadelphia Eagles. He's bounced to the Panthers. Uh, a very solid zone coverage cornerback. Another very solid zone player on defense. Devondre Campbell and Marcus Golden, who have spent their time as linebackers and safeties in the NFL. Also, both of them being graduates of Hutchinson Community College uh, and rounding out possibly the most well-known name, Cordell Patterson, who is top five in all-purpose yards last year in the NFL for the Atlanta Falcons. A lot of NFL talent coming through Hutchinson Community College, and a lot of those players, like I said, are two-way players. Must know multiple gadgets. Let's return to the play-by-play. -play. Just saw a first and 10 from a, a halfback draw inside, set up at the 25-yard line. Hutchinson already approaching the red zone with 10 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. A very successful first drive for Hutchinson. Uh, Hutchinson. And there goes a stop, a tackle from Colvin Miller. Gets his first tackle of the day. After the gain of one, makes a second and nine on the 24-yard line. Second and nine on the Triton 24-yard line. Hutchinson's awaiting for the call from the sideline. And you can expect a lot of that. Not a lot of stuff going to be huddled up for Hutchinson. Expect a lot of hurry-up offense as well. Their rushing attack is incredible. They're averaging, averaging 332 rushing yards per game. Nearly 665 rushing yards after two games on the season. That is absurd. Those are video game, easy mode type numbers. There's an incomplete pass. It'll bring up third and nine. Ball on the 24-yard line on the Triton side. Hutchinson, this is their opening drive of the contest. Another big third down here. Their fourth third down conversion try. They've been 100% so far. Fire to a quick slant. Moving up field. Going to have another first down. Uh, tackled by Aaron Warren, who is the star on defense from last week against Garden City with two interceptions. And now that Hutchinson has moved into the red zone, another thing to note from them, they are 100% in the red zone this season. They have yet to be stopped in the red zone. 
Will the Titans be the first to do it? And will it be on the opening drive? That is yet to, yet to be seen. Here's a Cadillac formation. Doubles on the right side. Fader out going deep, not looking for the ball. Uh, incomplete pass. That's too far out of range. As you saw, Jamal Spye was on co coverage over there for the Iowa Central Tritons. He got burned and uh, didn't get a look on the ball. It's good that he didn't make any contact as we saw a lot of penalties last week against Garden City, a lot of them being pass interference calls uh, from just not looking at the ball. Got to be looking at the ball when you're pressing as a cornerback. Here we go with a second and 10 ball on the 11-yard line. Quarterback keeper Collier moving forward. He'll have a pickup of two, maybe three. Expect a third down and seven on the eight-yard line. It was Colton Reed with the tackle for Iowa Central. Iowa Central staying in a 3-4 look. Look at Colton Miller spread out on the near side of your screen. Bottom left corner, wearing the number 10, outside linebacker. He's going to be the safe man over there. Staying in the flats. He's waiting for him. He's going to get hit hard for a tackle. Luckily, a Triton picked it up. A nice stop there from the 22 on the Iowa Central side. That was Xavion Reese who ended up getting the tackle. Malachi Bird was also there on the follow. Here comes a fourth down and six. And looky here, Hutchinson is showing field goal. Here comes a field goal try. It's Marcus Bonner. Excuse me. Yeah, I have Marcus Bonner with the field goal try. It's blocked! And that's the first stop of the season Hutchinson has been held to in the red zone. Iowa Central, not a beautiful stop. Oh, play still alive! Go! Get moving! Go, go, go! Hutchinson is hanging their head down low. Get moving! Go, Tritons! We score! We score from the field goal block! Hutchinson's not used to getting blocked and not getting stopped in the red zone, and they're going to have to pay for it there. When you come to Fort Dodge, you got to play football 100% of the time. That's going to cost them. Hutchinson can't give that up. Poor execution by him. I don't care how well you look on a drive. It's about execution. They give it up there. Now, there is a penalty marker on the field. It may be coming back. As the Stripes are talking it over right now. Still at 0, zero 7 minutes, 50 seconds on the clock. And Triton Nation is ecstatic over there. I don't know if that's picking up on the mic. Uh, wonderful attendance from both sides today. Lots of fans came from Hutchinson Community College. Coming from Hutchinson Community College, still talking it over. And it is a touchdown, officially called touchdown. That makes it 6-0. You got to go on the other side, 6-0. Nope, got to go on the other side. This is our area. Makes it 6-0. So the Tritons officially do have a score. Tritons officially have a score, but hang on now. Coming out to talk about it with the head officials. And the referees, once again, it looks like they are checking out the tablet. Congolo, Buen, and Kamba is lining up for a PAT try. Still talking it over. So they'll, they will reverse it. So the call was blocked 
blocked in the neutral zone, grounded in the end zone. That will bring it back. That will bring it back. And regardless of anything of that, you know, got you, neither side. Both the Tritons were caught doing this too. So I'm not putting all the hate over on the Hutchinson side, but a lot of guys were hanging their head and walking to the sideline. Uh, Tritons had no one to beat. So Tritons will move back. They will take the score off the board. It'll stay 0-0. Zero to zero. And Iowa Central looks to be coming off for their first drive. Zero, 0 here comes the Triton's first offensive drive of the game. Justin Silverstein in the pistol. Looking heavy on the right side. Doubles to the right. Lone receiver left. Draw. Run and right on his feet and moving. Mario Sanders breaks towards the 50. Breaks, breaks towards the 50, and that's a first Triton first down of the day. Hurry up offense. Triton's getting back to the line of scrimmage. Here we go. Seven minutes and 30 seconds remain. Back to pass, looking right, stepping up in the pocket. There goes Silverstein, moving on his feet. He'll slide. We'll have a pickup of seven. Here comes a second and three. No win into factor today. A slight breeze. Not the sunniest of skies either. Gray out, a perfect day for football in my book. In the pistol, doubles on each side. Another halfback draw. This time it's Spencer's in. Moving forward, uh, after some forward progress, he may be good for a first down. There goes a first and 10. Ball will be on the 41 yard line. So Tritons in three plays they've ran have two first downs. Here comes a swing pass outside. Oh, pick it up. Was it thrown behind Silverstein? That might be a fumble. Uh-oh. That might be a fumble. Got to play to the end again. That's the second time already. These guys not playing to the whistle. Got to play to the whistle. So the ruling on the field is backwards pass recovered by Hutchinson. Got to play to the whistle. It hurt Hutchinson, and now it's going to hurt the Tritons. And now another turnover. Uh, officially, that'll go down as a fumble as a backwards pass. First and 10, Hutchinson will be set up on the 43-yard line. And hang on, hold your horses, we'll have review of this. Play under further review. I was lined up basically right in the middle of it and uh, the play was a design swing pass and most of the time swing passes end up being thrown behind the quarterback. Backwards pass, right? Uh, but also could be an instance, if it was thrown forward, it'll just be an incomplete pass. Now, how that could hurt the Tritons on offense in the future is watching out for those swing passes moving forward because you can't have a blocker move five yards downfield on a pass that goes forward. Got to watch out for that. Look at the thing from all angles. It'll either be a second down in 10 in Hutchinson territory for the Tritons or a turnover via fumble, a backwards pass. Still looking it over under the Triton tent. And there goes the Triton cheer, dance, and band. 
and grooving together with the rest of Trite Nation. First and 10. Uh, so, like I said, ruling on the field is first and 10 for Hutchinson from a backwards pass. If they don't have good enough evidence to overturn it, then it's going to stay with Hutchinson. So that's another factor that could come into play. Uh, one thing will be for certain, 6 minutes, 21 seconds on the clock. Here comes the official with the call. Backwards pass is confirmed. So Hutchinson will pick up a first down. So yeah, so it's official. It's official. Both teams have hurt each other from not playing till the end of the whistle. Uh, and that was also a challenge from Iowa Central. So they'll be charged with their first timeout. Tritons will have two remaining in the first half. Blue Dragons will have three. In the gun. Doubles left, lone receiver right, play action pass, looking long, firing, deep, 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 looking for it, oh, and through the hands, through the, ha through the hands of Stefan Saywan. Saywan went with the picnic basket grab and almost got the interception, but it hit the turf before corralling it. Here comes a second and 10. So a second and 10, ball on the uh, Hutchinson 43 yard line. Hutchinson in the all-white uniforms. Tritons have the blue tops and blue helmets. Zero to zero is the score. We just got started in the first quarter to play. Hutchinson is ranked at number one in the country. Iowa Central is number five. Swing pass, look. Uh, incomplete pass again. Swing pass, look. And uh, the Tritons, to me, look like there was some blown coverage there. Look like no one checked on the curl route who is the intended receiver coming from the slot. And Coach Conley is letting his guys hear it. Got to pick up those man-on-man -man looks. Third and 10. Here comes a third and 10. From the gun. Man in motion. Back to pass. Looking long. Stepping up. Here we go. Quarterback scramble. Running towards the first down line. Oh, it's going to be close. If it's not a first down, then it's going to be and inches. First and 10 or and inches. And Hutchinson is wasting no time to head out onto the field with the bunt team. And they went out there so quick, you might think that something may be fishy. We'll see. It is a fourth and inches. Ball on the Triton 48-yard line. Look at that. They have three backers to block for the punter, sending four men to rush. Punt is up, going back to the Tritons. Uh, still rolling inside the five, all the way to the one. What a spot. What a spot from starting punter over there from Hutchinson. That's the 16. Stephen Forbes will have a first and 10 for Iowa Central on their own one-yard line. Five minutes, 19 seconds remain. First and 10 on the one. So both teams in their opening offensive drives put together pretty well drives. Both teams committed turnovers in the second drive for Hutchinson, able to pick up one first down, but then was stopped just inches away. Uh, here comes a, the second drive of the game on offense for the Tritons. Tritons have struggled this season with their rushing attack. Uh, Hutchinson is showing three deep safeties and a Mike linebacker, also five on the line. Maybe a false start. They do call the play dead. And it's too bad they did call the play dead because Sanders came up with the catch and he's got lightning shoes. He would have been in the end zone in seconds. And the Stripes will get back together to talk it over. Goes a dead ball, offside with contact, defense. 
So that will give them a gain of five yards from the previous spot. So this is a first and five. Ball's going to be on the six-yard line now for Iowa Central. And that'll move the backfield. Well, actually, no. I was going to say uh, that would move the backfield out of the end zone, but no, they're still standing back there. Zinn with both feet back there, back to pass, looking for a short one, firing over to the Triton Harold Trainer, the fourth. He'll make the grab. And he'll be stopped just shy. Uh, no, he'll make the first down marker. There's the third first down conversion of the day for Iowa Central, first and 10. From the 12. Triton's in the pistol. Have a tight end to the weak side of the field. Double spread out wide to the left and a lone receiver right. Here's the man in motion, it's Bartolotta. Here's a quick fire to an in route. That goes over to Jaquez Hall. One of those superstar receivers that came out of Iowa City High. A gain of seven, so here comes a second and three. Second and three, ball on the Triton 19 yard line. The Tritons were very influenced in the pistol package last week, taking on the Bronc Busters. They may do the same here. In the pistol. Center man on a swing. It's Zinn. Got to watch out for it. That's what caused a fumble from earlier. Here's a fire deep. Open man, Mario Sanders. Caught it deep. The throw didn't have a whole lot of power on it. I, I got to say, if I got to say, if Justin Silverstein was able to lead Mario Sanders downfield, more than likely could have been in for six. Uh, but regardless, a big Pass main, gain of near 40 yards, set up on the Hutchinson 41-yard line, first and 10 Iowa Central. Triton struggled immensely in the first half last week to move the chains at all, and uh, in their first two offensive drives here, got to be uh, proud to be an Iowa Central Triton. If you just joined us, I'm Hank Ambrose for a top five matchup in NJCAA football. Here's the quick fire to the slant. Going to be a pickup just shy of the 10-yard marker. So here goes a gain of nine, second and one. Second and one, ball on the 32-yard line on the Hutchinson side. Now Jason Edwards was on the stop for the Tritons. Look at this, a blocking back is in formation here. A tight end, we don't see much to use in the set. Here's a fader out, quick fire over towards Sanders. Sanders wants a penalty with the rest of the wide receiver crew, but he's not going to get it pulled. Yeah, you know, I, I believe that was a correct call. Uh, reason being, I don't think that was a catchable pass. <laughs> Possibly if he had another five feet in front of him, maybe could have been caught, but he still would have had to dive for it, and uh, I'd say that's the main reason for that. Third and one. Two minutes, 49 seconds remain in the first quarter. Harold Trainer, off the jet sweep. He's running with the ball, looking for a first down on his feet. Not going to pick up very many, but he will have a gain of yards and a gain of a Triton first down. Move the change first and 10 on the 30-yard line. First and 10. Uh, in correction, make that on the 29-yard line. Oh. First and 10 on the 29, two minutes and 15 seconds remain. Here's a halfback draw for Spencer Zinn moving forward. And that was a high tackle, almost got his helmet taken off there, a gang tackle there from Hutchinson. Here comes a second down and five. Here comes a second down and five, but a timeout's called. Uh, a medical timeout. Looks like it's an offensive lineman, the number 75 on the Triton side. Uh, that would be Dodge Saucer of Grinnell, Iowa. Uh, got off to his own feet. Not for sure what the injury could be. It looks like he may be okay. I'll let you know as soon as I see him return to the contest. Second down and five on the 25-yard line for Iowa Central. Their first trip to the Hutchinson Red Zone begins right now. 
in the pistol. Uh, man in motion, it's Bartolotta. Uh-oh, got a scramble, looking short, firing to a comeback route. Yeah, and that's, that ball is thrown away over the head of Harold Trainer. Here comes a third and five on the 25. Minute 25 seconds remain. Third and five from the 25. Clock has stopped at one minute and 27 seconds remaining in the first quarter. In the pistol. Shotgun towards the right side. Looking left. Uh-oh, here comes a pressure and thrown down for a sack. Looking for the number. Let's see. Uh, looked like the 32 that got there first from Hutchinson. That is Daniel Brown with the sack. Defensive lineman out of Kansas City, Missouri. So instead of a fourth and five, that'll bring the Tritons back to a fourth and near 15. And Tritons come out in punt formation. Tritons come out in punt formation. Ball is on the 34. 50 seconds remain in the first quarter. And some of you back at home watching may be asking, why not try to take this field goal? Well, it'd be a long one for one, but for two, now this gives an opportunity to pin Hutchinson on their own one yard line, just like the Tritons had to start this drive right here. Snap is off for Miller, who is your special teams player of the week last week in conference play. Uh, sky kick and looky there. Just like, just like the Tritons, Hutchinson's gonna have to start up on their own one yard line. It'll be a first and 10 on the one. Down at the one yard line where we first 22 first. seconds remain in this first quarter. And the wind is starting to pick up. It's blowing into the north, which will be going against Hutchinson. Yeah, and the ruling on the field is officially punt down at the one yard line. First and 10, 22 seconds remain. In the gun, trips to his right. There's 10, I think there was just 10 men on the, was there 10? No, no, there was 11. I just saw a hidden tight end. False start against a offense number seven. There goes half the distance to the goal. You're already just one yard away. Oh, man. This will make it about a Subway sandwich away. That much closer to a safety. First and 10. Way back deep. Going jet sweep in motion. And tackled safety. And the Tritons erupt. They're on the board first. Triton score first, look at those towels. Up and down, up and down over on the Triton side. They're ecstatic. Oh, and it was Aaron Warren who picked up the tackle, who is your ICAC Defensive Player of the Week last week. Uh, Stefan Sewan, who dropped the pick from earlier, was also there as a second man to touch the ball carrier. That makes a score two to zero. Tritons get on the board first with a safety. And what we'll do is we'll take a quick 30 second break. We'll return right after this. For more Triton Sports, stay right here on Triton Nation.
Triton Nation, we're back to it live at Dodger Stadium. Triton just picked up a safety. Here is the return from the safety. Sanders still on his feet. Uh, had a lane outside, but he'll be gang tackled. Brought down at the Triton 43 yard line. If it just joined us, <laughs> wow, what a first quarter it's been. You can feel the tension in the air. It's thick, thick, thick between these two teams. Both of them, of course, want to stay in the top five. Both of them want to earn their spot for an early playoff seed. And the whole action's coming down right here. Dodger Stadium in Fort Dodge, Iowa. First down and 10. It's 2-0. Tritons come out. Empty backfield, sending a man in motion. There's Silverstein back to pass. He's firing over the middle of the field. Bartolotta gets his first target and his first reception. Going to be good for a pickup of 15. First and 10 at the Hutchinson 43-yard line. And good for another Triton first down. And that will close the first quarter, so let's go ahead and throw it to a minute-long break. A minute-long break will resume with the beginning of the second quarter with the Tritons going into the win right after this. For more Triton football, stay right here on Triton Nation. Open the only biomanufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. Right Nation, we return after the break. An awesome day for football. Uh, I mentioned this in the first quarter. You can feel the tension in the air. Great attendance from both the Iowa Central side and the Hutchinson side. Uh, just a, I'm super proud to be able to witness this. This is going to be one for the record books. I promise you that. Win or loss for either side. It's going to be really fun to call the rest of the way through. Here's a first play from the second quarter. First and 10 for Silverstein. He'll hand off, uh, getting his way back to the line of scrimmage, pushing forward. Look at those big Maulers up front. Uh-oh, they're saying there was a strip fumble. Well, at least one player is. The number five from Hutchinson saying the ball was stripped. At the bottom of the dog pile, the ball carrier still has it. Haven't made official call yet. Uh, and th they're calling for second down. The line judge, line judge on the Triton side, uh, excuse me, line judge on the Hutchinson side is the first to call for a second down. Second and five, 30 seconds into the second quarter. I'm Hank Ambrose. If you just joined us, this is a top five matchup in Division I football for the NJCAA. There goes a false start. Uh, that's going to be close. It's either going to be on the right guard or that defensive end from Hutchinson. I think it's going to be on Hutchinson. It all depends on what the head judge saw first. Adam Lamar is the guy I would put my money on. With reaction, number 36, defense. Okay, Five yep. Five. Five yards from the previous spot. That penalty. And that'll result in a first down. So it is against the defense. Makes it 2-0, 14 minutes and 20 seconds remain. First and 10 from the pistol. Trips right, lone receiver left, and Mario Sanders. They're going to press him all day long. He's got speed, going to have to look out for that. Uh, tried to throw to a box route. Ended up be getting swatted down. Uh, knocked down by the number four from Hutchinson. That's... And that would be Kayvon Sherman of Hutchinson who had the last swat against Silverstein. Second and 10. Ball on the Hutchinson 32-yard line. 14 minutes and 8 seconds remain. Silverstein, play-action pass. Tried to float it over the head of Sanders. 
Uh, he was pressed really well. Uh, great defensive coverage there by the number one, Jameer Mundy. They couldn't have played that any better. And another thing I really liked what Hutchinson did is they kept their deep safety over on that strong side where Mario Sanders lines up to run those fade routes, those streak routes towards the end zone. Uh, oh, wow, look at this formation. They're having triangle trips with a fourth receiver in the set. Here comes a man in motion. The 14 from Iowa Central, Riley Purcell, doubles to the left side, trips to the right, fire into the end zone. Harold Trainer just out of reach. And that's going to be three incomplete passes in a row, bringing up fourth down and 10. On the Hutchinson 32 yard line, 14 minutes remain. see what they come out in this go around looks like Tritons are at least lining up to go for it expect the hard count here doubles each side pistol there he goes on a swing rolling right wheel route there's the wheel route over the middle field incomplete pass turnover on downs from a big fourth down stop that's the second turnover that the Tritons have given up on and the second that Hutchinson has committed Turnover on downs brings a first and 10 for Hutchinson. From the 32 yard line, if you just joined us, top five matchup, Triton's ranked at number five in the NJCAA, Hutchinson ranked at number one. First and 10, back to pass, Collier looking left. He's wrapped up and brought down. On the Sack on the play. And it was the 80. There with Colbin Miller. Colbin Miller was there first, and not the 80, but the 90. Colbin Miller was there first. Malachi Bird was right behind him. That's a big loss, too. He took a step back when taking the sack after dropping back to pass. Here comes a second and 20 ball on the 22-yard line, losing 10 yards. 13 minutes, 20 seconds remain. Collier looking left. A deep curl route and juking up field. Wow, look at the moves made by that last receiver there. That's the number zero of Hutch. Oh, Singleton Jr. Oren Singleton Jr. Up by Eli West. With his second reception of the day. Uh, gets an extra yard after bringing back what they lost from the sack. Here's a third and nine from the 33-yard line. Now the wind's starting to pick up. Mother Nature must be involved wanting to watch this one too. Wind's starting to blow a little bit harder. Some strong gusts into the north every five seconds or so. Back in the gun, tight end. Front right hip of Collier. Here's a deep curl. Fired. Uh, Triton saying that it smacked the ground, and it did. Lines judge calling for an incomplete pass. Myself, I didn't have a good angle on it, but it seemed as though that he didn't bring it into his body as... The catch was coming in. So there's another fourth and nine. Up fourth down. There goes that Triton band again, loud and proud. Fourth and nine from the 33, 12 minutes and 30 seconds remain. Punting look. It's high sky towards the 20 yard line bouncing to the 15 rolling to the 10 where it'll be stopped right there another great spot from the punter first and 10 from their own 10 yard line 12 minutes and 18 seconds remain in the first half tritons lead 2-0 uh, another thing that i'd like to bring up from hutchinson this is a team that has three primary scouting locations or for for their recruits they love to bring in kids from Kansas, for one, of course, uh, making up most of their team. In second, Georgia, and then in third, Florida. Those are the top three stations and states from each recruit on this Hutchinson lineup sheet. 
Hutchinson did beat the Tritons 31 to 28 in Hutchinson last year in a double overtime matchup. That was actually starting quarterback this season, Justin Silverstein's very first road start of his Triton career. And they'll call the play dead. Looks like a helmet came out on the field. Hilliard was on the carry for Iowa Central. He'll have to leave the play. This helmet falling off. Shermit was who had the tackle after the gain of two. Oh. Here's a second and eight from the 12-yard line. Silverstein in the pistol. Heavy on the strong side. Doubles right, lone receiver left. Play action pass, fire and quick to 83. Again, great defensive breakup from the number five. Man, I don't know who has a better defensive back unit. Both of these guys are looking really solid today. Uh, that time it was Ryan Nolan of Gainesville, Florida, who picked up the deflection a moment ago. Third and eight from the 12. 11 minutes and 45 seconds to go where the clock is stopped. Tritons lead 2-0. Look at this island spread. Three heavy on the strong side. They'll motion back to the middle of the field, looking at their defensive backs. Back to pass. Silverstein rolls to his right. Stuck up in the end zone. Going to have to just throw it away. And almost picked off with one hand. That was right in front of uh, Coach Blomberg of the Iowa Central Tritons coaching staff. Works with the tight ends. There goes a fourth and eight now. Ball on the 12, 11 minutes, 35 seconds remain. And a three and out, the first the Tritons have put up on offense in either of their drives. And Darby Roper is back deep to return for Hutchinson. He's standing with his heels on the 50. Colvin Miller is standing about three to four yards in the Triton end zone, ready to receive the punt. As he's got it back to, re ready to the, receive the snap, rather. A line drive kick. A Triton, uh, so I get, okay, some confusion on the play. Look like the Tritons reacted as if one of the Blue Dragons touched it, but it doesn't matter. Blue Dragons did pick up receiving the punt there. First and 10, ball on the Triton 47-yard line. Here is the best field position that Hutchinson has got to start in for today. It's 2-0. Iowa Central holds on to their lead with 11 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter. In the pistol, doubles right, tight end. On the strong side. See him in the two-point stance. Here is an inside zone. Beat the first line of scrimmage. Uh, defenders Xavion Reese had to trip him up with a shoelace tackle after the gain of six and kudos to Reese for not giving up on the play if he didn't get that shoelace tackle in on his foot he could have been gone for a gain of at least 20 maybe more after first contact here we go read option running right he's got running room finds a lane still on his feet dragged down by the 20 on the Triton side Ajay Russell brings them down. First and 10 for Hutchinson. They want the first touchdown. 10 minutes, 40 seconds remain, and the clock is ticking. Impressive work from Samari Collier today. Collier hands off inside zone. A new back in the backfield, Tyrell Reed, takes a handoff. Had a spin move. He'll get a gain of one, maybe two. 10 minutes and 15 seconds remain in the second quarter, and it is a gain of two, second and eight. Ball on the 23-yard line. Uh, Hutchinson is in the Triton red zone for the second time today. The first time they were blocked on a field goal try. It's their first time they were stopped in the red zone all season long. There goes a heavy tackle high from Ajay Russell again. Gain of four on the stop, makes it, I'll make that a gain of six, third and two. Third and two, ball on the 17 yard line, nine minutes, 35 seconds remain. Big play here. In the gun, lone receiver left, 
Look out for the six over there. It's Trey Richardson. Doubles on the right side. Uh-oh, false start. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna make for an automatic first down. Oh, wait, are they calling it against the offensive line? Oh, it's against the offensive line. Against 58. Ashton Jackson. He must have changed where his feet were set because to me it looked like it was all on the 22, uh, Xavion Reese from the edge, but no, actually on and uh, the right guard. He'll be switched out onto the play. Here comes a third and seven in which would have been a third and two. Ball on the 22, nine minutes, 20 seconds remain in the gun. Line trips to the right, another false start. That is false start number four called against Hutchinson. Three against the offense, one against the defense. Uh, that's called against the zero, Oren Singleton. Third and 12, ball on the 27 yard line. Nine minutes, 10 seconds remain. Tritons have the lead, just two to zero, getting it from a safety. That's gonna flip the field, it looks like. Now a triangle trips on the weak side. Lone receiver spread wide. Here's a man in motion, the tailback looking right into the shadow. And now stepping up in the pocket, trying to run with it. Gonna have a gain of gonna have a gain of five, give or take. And they'll show a fourth and eight. Gain of five. Fourth and eight, ball on the Triton 23-yard line. And for the second time to get today, here comes Hutchinson, Hutchinson showing field goal. Showing field goal. Eight minutes, 30 seconds remain. 44-yard field goal. Cole Segrafs, Segrafs comes out on the field for the 44-yard field goal. Lining up. Sideline loud. Kick is up. And it is good. Hutchinson takes their first lead of the game. It's 3-2. to two, Eight minutes, 10 seconds remain. Tritons will receive right after this on Triton Nation's YouTube channel. Football fans, it's an instant classic for NJCAA Division I football. The Iowa Central Tritons head into this hosted matchup at Dodgers Stadium, ranked at number five in the entire nation. Hutchinson, Hutchinson is ranked at number one. We just saw a field goal, 44-yard field goal, made by starting kicker Cole Seagraves. He had his first field goal attempt blocked. That was back from the first drive uh, of the game. Here come the Tritons for their first kickoff return of the day. Tritons will be receiving the kick starting the second half, but that's not for another eight minutes and ten seconds of game time. Harold Trainer the fourth, and Mario Sanders back deep to return for Iowa Central. And look at this, look at this uh, envelope package they have back there. They have two deep men, as I just said. Uh, Tritons also having a blocking tight end, Ethan John back there in the central part of the field, and then two more backers in the block with a five-man defense and one man just in case they try for the squib kick and or onside recovery. But no, they do kick it back deep. Trainer uh, receives it in the end zone. He will go for the return. Uh, yeah, a gain of 15 will bring him to the 13-yard uh, line. First and 10, eight minutes and three seconds remain in the first half. It's always up to the return man on the judge of how you want to do it. There's, it's always hard to say what to return and what not to return. 
I, a lot of it comes down to mind games. Trainer thought he had an upper edge on the edge, uh, on the uh, end, excuse me. Uh, he didn't at that time. Tritons just make it to the 13 yard line, first and 10. Coming out of an offensive series where they had a three and out, gaining just two yards. Got to find a way to pick up more than that and at least get one first down. Milk some clock down. Back to pass, Silverstein looking for Texas as they will fire towards the 40-yard line with not a receiver in sight. Yeah, and you know, when you run Texas like that, it's a lot of bench routes. The interior slot receivers on each side, they run just about a five-yard box out route and then uh, deeper outposts from the uh, split end receivers on each side. That time just a little uh, too far or somewhat of a miscommunication between Silverstein and Trainer, the intended receiver. There is another box route. That time it's uh, ran by Mario Sanders. Seven yards on the split end on the near side of your screen. Tritons pick up eight yards from the last affair. Here's a third down and two. Heading into the game, like I mentioned a moment ago, Tritons have struggled when running with their tailbacks. And ha oh. oh, I had a gain of eight, but must have been a spot of forward progress or something. I thought they moved out of bounds. Mario must have stuck his the ball forward before making his way out of bounds, which would be called for a first down. My apologies. I mixed up on that. I got a, I missed out on that. Empty backfield. Doubles to the weak side. Line trips to the right. A dump flat. Oh, wow. Straight to the ground. Straight to the ground, deflected pass, incomplete. It was actually almost caught by the edge rusher, number nine of Hutchinson. Tamara Shah, who, wow, imagine a big, tall defensive lineman like him making a one-handed grab, falling to the ground for an interception. Didn't happen, but about did. Second and 10 from the Triton 26-yard line, another empty backfield, trips right, doubles to the left. Quarterback draw, Silverstein takes off without a spy in sight. He'll have a pickup of 10 after sliding down. Should be enough for a first down, may give them inches. No, they do have enough for another Triton first down. First and 10, Iowa Central, six minutes and 45 seconds remain. If you just joined us, I'm Hank Ambrose on call. With you not just today, but for all Triton football home coverage on youtube.com slash Triton Nation, you can follow us there. Here we go, six and a half minutes remain in the first half, it's 3-2. Hutchinson has the lead after they just hit a 44 yard field goal from their last drive. Empty backfield again, tight end is split in the set. Uh, timeout possibly called from the Tritons. Let's see. We got a timeout. Still waiting for what the call is on the field. It's a timeout, but they didn't show uh, from which side or what's going on. So I'll just tell you that it was a timeout for now. Six minutes, 16 seconds remain in the first half to play. Got some more stats to run through from Hutchinson. I, get, I did not get to touch on uh, in the pregame report. Hutchinson. Uh, their passing attack has been really well today, but heading into this game, uh, their passing yards per attempt has not been very good, which surprises me a whole lot, uh, knowing, you know, of course, how many yards they have from passing. They average just 6.8 yards per attempt heading into the game today for passing yards, uh, which is surprising because virtually every other team in the nation, most teams in the nation, Average over 10 yards. Uh, so the cutting that down to half, you can see how much they utilize on the short pass game. I mentioned this earlier, 664 rush yards. Averaging 332 rush yards per game heading into week number three in the contest in Fort Dodge. Those are some more offensive team stats from Hutchinson. Here we go, a first and 10 from the 38-yard line. Uh, and the play is called dead. Penalty markers, dirty laundry all over the field. Some extracurricular over on the Hutchinson sideline as well. Some talk between some two, and uh, Triton's called on a false start, bringing back. It's called against 68. 
called on Tyler Nordman of Oswit, Michigan. So a loss of five brings a first and 15 from the 33-yard line. Six minutes, 15 seconds remain. Now, a lot of folks, a lot of listeners, a lot of viewers, I guess, if you will, may say, oh, man, that's a loss of five yards, no good. But actually, in many ways, this opens up the playbook because you got to spread out much more for the defensive backs. As you saw right there, spread out much more. No one was around the number three, and no one was around the number one, Mario Sanders. It was a pass intended for Lorenz lacking. Unfortunately, Silverstein just couldn't have the accuracy to get it there from that last attempt, which is a once in a blue moon throw from Silverstein, a guy that's very accurate. He was a D1 pitcher, spent time at Western Kentucky before moving up to Alabama, then eventually walking on to the football program here at Iowa Central. St scout team quarterback for two. Oh, my goodness. Look at that grab. Penalty marker thrown, and the Tritons are going crazy. Wow. It's about a 10-yard out route sent from a box. Jaquez Hall, which may be the catch of the season so far from any Triton. Uh, of course, it didn't, it didn't move the chains, didn't put any more points on the board, but that one-handed grab looking outside, running to his outside, too, with his non-dominant hand. I mean, props, props to him. Uh, defensive pass interference was called on the play, so that'll bring an automatic first down and 10. Ball on the Triton 42-yard line. IC3 does have the ball marching towards Hutchinson's territory. Haven't got there yet. They have milked uh, two and a half minutes off the clock from this drive so far. Doing a much better job today in uh, milking the time of possession, holding on to it. Here we go with a wide receiver screen moving forward. Going to have a gain of 10. Looks like, oh no, I was looking at the blockers downfield. Sanders was actually tackled for a gain of three. Yeah, I was, I was looking too far ahead downfield, uh, which tells you that Tritons did a poor job at blocking that first line of defense. They got slipped right through against Sanders. Here's a second and seven from the 45 on the Triton side. Triton's on offense moving from right to left on your screen. Another out route and another grab by Mario Sanders. Once more, he'll be short just two yards. Here's a third and... Down by two. Uh, make that a third and three. They're not going to give him the forward progress. As the skies continue to look more and more gray outside. Third and three, five minutes to play in the first half. Tritons are on offense. We got a big third down here. There goes those towels spinning in the air. Sideline erupting. Triton sent a man in motion. Back to pass, firing quick, Sanders bobbles the ball and it hits the turf, incomplete pass. And now you got a decision here. Four minutes, 43 seconds remain and Tritons look to be showing punt. Okay, but look at this here. Tritons are showing punt, but look who comes out onto the field. The big fella, he sticks up like a, he sticks out like a sore thumb. The number eight for the Tritons over on their side. That's Andre Porter, the starting interior defensive lineman for the Tritons for the past two seasons. He's in as a blocker. Might think that he might use something different this play, but no, they do go with a punt. Punting it back, back, back. Oh, it dies! Staying in! Flips it back! What do they call? Let's see what they call. They're calling him on the one? Are they going to touch it back? They will call for the touchback. So the ball never entered the end zone, but what happened there mo most more than likely was uh, the Flyers from the Tritons that tried to deaden the ball at the one or at least inside the five. As they touched the ball, their foot was on the line, which causes for a touchback. So a first and 10 on the 20-yard line. Hutchinson has a one-point lead. It's 3-2 with four minutes and 33 seconds to drive. In the second quarter, they'll come out in the gun. 
Another thing that I can expect uh, to hurt Hutchinson today is because they've had not very quality opponents to open up the season. We've seen back-to-back -back blowouts against them with Navarro College, 42 to six, and then Ellsworth Community College, 72 to seven. This varsity team, this uh, their uh, depth chart one, their starters, not going to be used to playing a full game of football. That's something that could definitely hurt them for the entirety of this game today. There goes a gain of two, second and eight from the 22-yard line, four minutes on the clock. Here's a halfback end around headed towards the outer edge and stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dan Knutson was there first. Knutson, excuse me. A big lumberjack he is. That's what Coach Montalto called him. Three minutes, 30 seconds remain. After the gain of three, here's a third and five. Cadillac formation, doubles right, lone receiver left. Read option, quarterback keeper. Moving forward. Moving forward should have enough for a first down. And they will move the chains. Moving the chains. First and 10 for Hutchinson at the 30 yard line. Thank you. Got my stats flying all over the place. Here we go, first and 10 at the 30. Under three minutes to play and the clock is ticking. Back to pass, looking long. Firing deep, open man in the pocket. Grab made by the number eight. Blown coverage. Tritons don't show a deep safety from a first and 10 and it's gonna cost them no points on the board but now Hutchinson gets back in the Triton red zone for the third time today. That last catch made by the number eight. The number eight, that's Zariah Beeson. Back to the Cadillac. Doubles on the weak side, lone receiver outright. Look how tall the number seven is. The lone receiver to the strong side of the field for Hutchinson. Expect a shot to the end zone if they run a pass. They don't, they go with an inside zone. Bring them back. And that's a tug of war that you don't want to go against. Oh my goodness, Tyrell Reed, nowhere to go. And that's a do not enter highway. Driving on the wrong side of the road, ending up on that side. Uh, first and 10 will move to a second and 16. Ball will now be on the Triton 22 yard line. Back in the Cadillac with two steps behind the quarterback this time rather than being per, uh, per parallel at the hips. Here's a swing pass outside moving forward. We'll have a gain of eight, should be a third and eight. On the 15, Singleton Jr. with the last grab. One minute, 20 seconds remain. The score is 3-2. Jamal Spahi with the stop on defense for Iowa Central. Tritons have one timeout remaining. Blue Dragons have all three. Cadillac doubles left, lone receiver right. And Hutchinson may milk the clock and take a timeout. Looking over at the sideline, uh, play clock should be, it is winding down, 10 seconds remaining on the play clock. And they're gonna let it milk down to the closing seconds and take a timeout to talk about what they wanna do on a third down and 10 conversion. Let's keep it right here, a big third down and 10 for the Blue Dragons who have the lead 3-2. Ball's on the 16 yard line. And just like that first and 15 the Tritons had earlier, I told you how much it opens up the playbook and forces the defense to go into a zone coverage. A lot of different routes can beat a zone coverage, a lot. Not as many can beat a man-on-man -man coverage uh, and not as many talented receivers can beat man-on-man -man coverage either. It's gonna be a really tough spot to see what you do here because not only do you have the first down marker you gotta stop, which is 10 yards in front of the line of scrimmage, but you also have the end zone, which is 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, plus another 10 yards deep. So if Hutchinson goes short for five yards, let's say, they have a chance to pick up a first down, 
but anything past 10, a very good opportunity to score a touchdown in the Hutchinson side. They're starting to raise their vocals, claps around the board. They're getting loud for their boys. Third and 10 on the 16, 41 seconds remain. From the Cadillac, doubles left and a receiver right. And they've yet to resume the play clock. We're waiting for it, waiting for the line judges to set up. Raising the roof. Tritons and Blue Dragons want your support. A big play here. This will set the motion for the rest of this game to close the first half. Third and 10 to the end zone. It's up and grabbed by the number four. 16 yard touchdown to Stefan Forbes. Stefan Forbes. Oh, make that correction. Make that Demetric Whitlock. That scored the touchdown. That's 9-2 now. And here comes the PAT. Demetric Whitluck, you saw there, ran something similar to an out route, but he was line up, lined up in the slot. So actually, a lot of the time, that's more of a hitch. Fading him into the end zone. PAT is good. That makes it 10-2. 36 seconds remain in the first half. We'll take a break and return right after this on Trite Nation. We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. Back to it on Trite Nation's YouTube channel. We just saw a 16-yard hitch route from Demetric Whitlock score a touchdown. The first of the day from the Blue Dragons. That makes it 10-2. Both, both offenses have looked really well. They've had good execution on multiple third down and fourth down conversions. I think what it's came down to is the last one needed. Stopped at the red zone, stopped at the goal line, stopped crossing the 50, those big ones. 10-2, Triton's down by eight, and now they'll be returning the kickoff with 36 seconds remaining in the first half. Deep kick into the end zone. Triton's will have a touchback at the 20-yard line. First and 10. With some extracurricular on the field near the 25. Tritons have one timeout remaining. Blue Dragons have two. And you could try to take a shot or possibly just knee it and go into halftime. Talking it over. Tritons take the, the field from the 25 yard line. And Tritons are showing pistol tight end on the strong side in a heavy formation doubles on the near side of your screen Tritons hand off uh, trying to find a lane uh oh ball come out ball may have came out I don't know I look like he was called down though bottom of the dog pile Still, uh, bottom of the dog pile, Triton still had it. So uh, second and five from the 32-yard line. Five seconds remaining in the half. Looks like Triton's one to set up for one more play, and they don't get the snap off. So that will close the first half with the score 
in favor of the Hutchinson Blue Dragons. I'm going to take a break and we're going to talk about what we saw in the first half and what improvements both teams can make heading into the second half as well. And more in store for the football broadcast. The five versus the one. A top five showcase for NJCAA football is broadcasted right here on Triton Nation. We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in licensing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. Sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons.
Triton Nation, welcome to the Triton Halftime Report. It's a windy day in Fort Dodge, Iowa, picking up more and more gray skies outside, but still perfect enough for most football fans to watch an instant classic like we have for today. A top five matchup in NJCAA football for the Division I class. Triton's ranked at number five heading into this one, hosting the number one ranked Hutchinson Blue Dragons. Blue Dragons coming off of a runner-up season where they lost to the Iowa Western Reavers in the national championship game just a season ago. Last year was also the first time in a little while that the Blue Dragons and Iowa Central paired up against each other on the season where the Blue Dragons got the best of Iowa Central 31 to 28 in a double overtime classic at Hutchinson Community College. Uh, wanted to go through some of the things we saw from the first half. First off, 10-2 uh, is the score at halftime. Hutchinson Community College has a lead. And the opening drive of the game on offense for Hutchinson, we saw something we've yet to see all season long. And that's a stop in the red zone that the Tritons put on from a blocked field goal, a controversial play from the blocked field goal. Uh, neither Hutchinson nor most of the Triton players play to the very end of the whistle, and that's Pop Warner football rules. you got to play to the end of the whistle, uh, and it was actually Brown on the Triton side who picked it up and was headed all the way to the end zone, originally called a Triton defensive touchdown from special teams. It was called back and reversed after they checked the film out and saw that the ball was kicked from the neutral zone, and then it was received it was picked up in the end zone that's what caused for a touchback for the Iowa Central Tritons uh, but regardless that was the first time on the season for the Hutchinson offense uh, some other things we saw from the opening drive for the Iowa Central Tritons on offense was we saw a fumble that was recovered by Hutchinson that came off of a backwards pass it was a swing pass sent over to Spencer Zinn uh, just didn't play to the end of the whistle again we saw it happen again both of those opening turnovers, both of those opening drives, uh, both sides didn't play to the end of the whistle, but it was Hutchinson that came away with the second go around. Uh, didn't see a score for some time. It wasn't until Aaron Warren of Iowa Central picked up a safety after we saw Colvin Miller pin Hutchinson on their own one yard line. He's your returning special teams player of the week in the ICAC conference that the Tritons play in. Uh, another great day for the punter and outside linebacker Colbin Miller playing both this season for Iowa Central. Uh, pinned him on the one. That caused for the first score of the game. 2-0 to zero, uh, through most of the contest until we got to the six-minute marker in the second quarter. 44-yard field goal hit by their starting kicker, uh, Cole Seagraves. Same kicker who had it blocked from earlier. That made it 3-2. Next thing you know, a last second drive heading all the way down the field. Saw a big third down, <coughs> excuse me, third down and 10 conversion on the 15-yard line that the Blue Dragons tried to put up, and it was successful. They ran a hitch fade route into the deep corner of the end zone, Catch was made by Demetric Whitlock. Good for a 16-yard receiving touchdown. Uh, Tritons went three and out on two drives. They also were stopped on a turnover on downs from earlier. That was basically the story of the first half. As we continue the Triton halftime report, I'd like to let you know uh, that the Mark's Auto Mart Triton Tailgate Show will be uploaded to the Triton Nation YouTube channel later on this evening. Be paying attention and turn on push notifications on youtube.com slash Triton Nation to make sure you know when the release of that comes out and when you also know when all the live streams are occurring. Oh, thank you. Uh, Triton Nation continuing with the halftime report. A big thank you to our other sponsors of the broadcast, CNOS, Rash Construction, Avela Bank, Mark's Auto Mart, as well as CJ Bio of America. Thank you for sponsoring the broadcast all season long right here on Triton Nation. Some of the other notable stats that I didn't get to cover in the pregame show that Hutchinson has, uh, the biggest one being their rushing yards, 664 rushing yards through two games. That's 332 per game. That's ridiculous. That's a stat you don't ever see. Uh, great start to the season for Hutchinson. Uh, I will bring up once again, uh, maybe I'm being a little extra cruel, but not against quality teams at Navarro College, a team that's 0-2 on the season. At Ellsworth Community College, also a team that's 0-2 on the season. 
rather the Tritons who have seen top 15 matchups against the likes of Garden City, that was most recent, and Independence Community College in week number one. So more stats uh, that I thought were notable for Hutchinson is their average yards per punt at 39 yards, which isn't great, it isn't the most stellar stat in the world, uh, but still really solid. Uh, you see a lot of muff punts from time to time from these JUCO athletes who don't necessarily come to be a punter. A lot of these punters and kickers are turned from a normal position like Colvin Miller, who is uh, first an outside linebacker, uh, second hand punter for the Iowa Central Tritons. Uh, heading into the game, 100% red zone percentage for the Hutchinson Blue Dragons. That was stopped from the first drive. We already covered that a moment ago. Heading into the game today, Hutchinson had three defensive touchdowns. Three defensive touchdowns for the first two games of the season. 18 penalties heading into this game. 197 yards of penalty yards. Uh, time of possession per game for Hutchinson, 28 minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, so that is at 49% basically of total game time. And comparing that to the Iowa Central Tritons, they head into this one just having 15 and a half minutes of time of possession per game. That is something that the Tritons have already improved on at this point in the game, 30 minutes through uh, the game clock. Uh, Got to improve on that for Iowa Central. I th think they've done a pretty good step in the right direction to improve that for the rest of the season. Uh, I went through some of the notable pro players that have graduated from Hutchinson Community College. If you missed that, I'll go through that again right now. Devontae White, I'd say, is the biggest one um, or the best, most recent one of recent memory. Uh, he just graduated from Hutchinson from 2017, spent his freshman and sophomore seasons here, and then he went on to play for the national championship Georgia Bulldog team. Uh, he was drafted in the first round in the 2019 NFL Draft class by the Green Bay Packers. Some more Pro Bowl and All-Pro selections. Kyle Wilson, Gerald Everett, Alvin Kamara, uh, Devondre Campbell, Marcus Golden, and Cordell Patterson, all are graduates of Hutchinson Community College. And if you notice from them, they're all two-tool players. Uh, they're guys that do multiple things, uh, whether it's Alvin Kamara, who is uh, the star running back of the New Orleans Saints that also catches a lot of passes for them. Uh, similar situation with Cordell Patterson and the Atlanta Falcons. Or if you're looking at a linebacker like Devondre Campbell, who is a Mike linebacker, who's also seen some positional uh, plays as a hybrid safety in his pl uh, pro days. Uh, it's very similar work with Marcus Golden as well. I have your rankings of week number two after the close of week number two for NJCAA football in Division I play. So Hutchinson is ranked at number one in the nation. Iowa Western is ranked at number two. Northwest Mississippi Community College is ranked at three. Kilgore College is ranked at four. Iowa Central Community College is ranked at five. Jones College ranked at six. Trinity Valley Community College is ranked at seven. East Mississippi Community College is at 8. Snow College is at 9. Garden City is ranked at 10 this week. Lackawanna College is ranked at 11. Butler Community College is at 12. Georgia Military College at 13. New, Mex New Mexico Military Institute is at 14. And Navarro College just snuck their way in at 15. Also receiving votes from the committee, Dodge City, Monroe College, Hines, Tyler, as well as Mississippi Gulf Coast. Some of your top five leaders in the nation for Division I play of NJCAA football. We are going to start with uh, yards per game. It begins with Peters of Kilgore, who leads the way with 383 yards per game passing. Justin Silverstein is at the top of the charts for overall passing touchdowns, tied for first at seven on the season with Massau of New Mexico Military, also at seven. Uh, also for the Tritons, Mario Sanders, leads the nation in receiving touchdowns with five on the year through two games of play so far. He also is second in yards per game with 100. And that's going to make the most of everyone between the Tritons and Hutchinson. Oh, actually, uh, left out one, uh, a rushing leader, first in the nation. Uh, the starting tailback of Hutchinson is Reed. 
And with that being said, that will close your Triton halftime show. We will return right away with your Triton second half. Iowa Central Tritons are down 10 to two. As they are receiving kickoff here. Keep in mind, Triton scored 20 points on Atzard in the second half last week against Garden City when they were home. Ended up scoring a total of 23 points in the second half last week. Here's a turn from the two-yard line. Mario Sanders makes his way towards the 20-yard line where we will resume the play-by-play -play coverage. If you don't know, I'm Hank Ambrose with you for Triton Football. What I love seeing is Tritons are continuing to be super energetic on the sideline as well as Hutchinson Community College. A great, great deal of effort from the sideline pumping up the crowd and the players on the field. 14 minutes, 54 seconds to play in the third quarter and here's the first offensive drive from the Tritons in the second half. In the pistol, heavy to the strong side. Firing deep straight away. Almost got into the hands of Harold Trainer. Very solid coverage by the number eight. And Iowa Central, not just the players, not just the fans, but the rest of the stands are really wanting a DPI call. They're not going to get it. Uh, Jordan Scruggs was the last defensive back on coverage against Harold Trainer, providing the stop. From the pistol, motion a man to the right. That's Washington. A fire short over to John, and uh, wow. Gain of 15 yards, but there is a penalty marker in the backfield, and the sideline of Hutchinson is saying that it's coming back. Let's see. There's a marker on the play. Let's see. <laughs> 14 minutes, 41 seconds remain in the third quarter. Just got started the second half. Triton's Begin with the opening possession here. <clears throat> Waiting on the call. Offense. Illegal touching against the offense. Matter of fact, it's against the 87. Five yards from the previous spot and a loss of down. It's tough. Here's a second and 15 now from the 15-yard line. Oh, yeah, correction, third down. So a third and 15 from the 15-yard line. That penalty is going to hurt bad. Look at this switch. Doing a complete switch on defense. Third and 15, 14 and a half minutes remain. There's two deep safeties in this package. Oh, my gosh. Look at who's at the line. No one in a three-point stance. Stance. This is a Cyclone Tornado defensive look, a 3-5. Over the middle of the field, a uh, ball got to the hands of Trainer. Silverstein hit hard in the back. He is okay, gets back up right away. And back-to-back -back drops following a flag. Brings up a fourth and 15 from the Triton 15-yard line. Tritons open up the second half with a three and out. Colvin Miller in punt formation. Colvin Miller back there with his heels on the one yard line. Gets the snap. Runs forward. Here he goes. On his feet. Still going. Moving. Switches hands. He's still on his feet to the 40. The 45. Colvin Miller does it all. Outside linebacker. Your special team player of the week for punting the football. And now he's running the football for 40 yards from where he was originally at when he got the snap. A gain of 32 yards officially. Colbin Miller is becoming my favorite Triton. First and 10 for IC3. Remaining on the field is the offense. Silverstein rallies the troops back on the field. That's a shot of adrenaline. Three deep safeties in this formation. Two linebackers, four crowded on the line, and two pressing cornerbacks. Pistol, heavy set to the right side. Here's a handoff to Washington. Washington is stopped. 
after the gain of maybe two. Stopped after a gain of maybe two. Oh, wow. He still gained yards from the play. He loves a tackle. Who is that? Wow. Uh, Amara Shah. Gain of one brings a second and nine. 12 minutes and 50 seconds remain. Ball on the 48-yard line. Pistol. Doubles. Weak side. Doubles on strong side as well. Mario Sanders intended receiver. It's picked off right in front of the Triton sideline. Picked off by the number five. Picked off by Ryan Nolan. Ryan Nolan. And Hutchinson gets the turnover that they thought they were going to have a play prior. First and 10 from their own 29-yard line. Hutchinson in the all-white uniforms. Tritons, the dark blue tops, and the white bottoms. Here we go from the pistol. Doubles to the strong side. Tight end in the set. Hand off. Halfback misdirection on his feet. He's moving. He's past the 45, near the 50. And a gain of 21 to open up the second half for Hutchinson. First and 10 to the 50. 12 minutes and 20 seconds remain. Tritons were saved with that Colbin Miller fake. Can't make the most of it. And now from the gun, a halfback draw. Going to be a gain of one, maybe two. The wind is just breezy into the north. <laughs> it is gray skies today. Very gray skies. Hutchinson has brought a storm with him from Kansas. Second and eight, 11 minutes, 35 seconds remain. In the gun, hard count. Thought they got the uh, Tritons to jump, but they didn't. In the gun, doubles left, tight end in the set. Lone receiver out to his right, back to pass, looking long. Firing to an open comeback route. That was the number eight on that reception. There goes Zariah Beeson, the completed catch. 11 minutes and five seconds remain. Tritons are started to play flat-footed. Hutchinson will come back out in the gun. Split end, spread all the way out to the right. Oh, two tight ends in this package. Two tight ends in this package. This is the first package we've seen today on offense from Hutchinson where there's two tight ends. Will that change anything? No, they just choose to block with one of them. Uh, deep pass. Oh, nearly in the hands of Spy. Couldn't come up with it. Even if he did make the grab on the ball, he may have been out of bounds. I don't know if he would have been able to be down there from the catch. That makes a third down. No, second down. Second down and 10. On the Triton 34-yard line. Clock stopped at 10 minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. In the gun, doubles right. Halfback draw, inside zone. Here's that read, breaking two tackles. Here's a third from a stiff arm, roaming forward for a pickup of six. On the tackle was Aaron Warren. Aaron Warren with the last tackle. Here's a switch. Tritons are bringing their big boys in. They switch out a defensive back for Dan Knudsen. Third and five on the 29. Under 10 minutes with the clock ticking. Pressure, ooh, nearly got to the quarterback. Stepping up in the pocket, he's rolling. He's to the end zone. Free open anchors. Good for a 29-yard rushing touchdown. From Samari Collier. Collier gets the open 
Opening score makes it 16-2. Here comes the special teams unit for the PAT. Sixteen two, Seagreaves to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up. And it's good. 17-2. Hutchinson strikes first. Tritons will have the second kickoff return of the second half. Coming up next on your home of Triton football right here on Triton Nation. We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysine production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. Triton Nation, we're back to your live play-by-play -play coverage. Just saw a 29-yard rushing touchdown from star quarterback Samari Collier. Stepped up in the pocket, saw the read. He evaded three Triton tacklers, all from different lines of defensive. One defensive lineman, one linebacker, and one deep safety. He went scampering in, almost untouched. Makes the score 17-2. A lot of football to be played. Nine minutes and 47 seconds remain in the third quarter. Keep in mind, Tritons scored 23 points in the second half of last week against the top 10 ranked Garden City, possibly the most athletic team in the nation. Do not count these Tritons out. It is 17-2 and the wind's blowing even harder and harder. The more the momentum Hutchinson gets on their side, it seems as if the harder the wind blows. And we're still waiting it over. While we'll wait for the kickoff and the ball to set, I'd like to thank our sponsors of the broadcast, CNOS, Rash Construction, Avela Bank, Marks Auto Mart, CJ Bio. Once again, Triton Tailgate Show brought to you by Marks Auto Mart will be broadcast, uh, will be put on our YouTube page later this evening. I got to sit down with athletic director, former head football coach of Iowa Central, coach Kevin Twait. Talked all fall sports and a little more. Here's a kickoff from the 35. Deep, deep towards the five. Sanders makes the grab to the 10. Run into the central part of the field. Tries to juke back. He'll be stopped at the 10. First and 10, Iowa Central, and they'll spot him at the 12-yard line. Triton's coming off a drive where they threw an interception. It's been a poor start to this third quarter so far with the Tritons on offense. Started with a three and out, picked up for a gain of 30 yards from Colbin Miller, lined up as a punter, ended up running with the football. And then next thing you know, a deep post, Picked off. And now we'll go inside zone with Washington. He'll spin forward again and again for a gain of five. Looks like a second and five to me at the 17. Hurry up offense. Here we go. Triton's now taking no time. Here's the set. Twins on each side. Shotgun formation, handoff, Washington. He's got a lane, he's running. He'll have enough for a first down. Oh. Flags. They have a penalty marker on the play. Thrown towards the defense, but you never know with these. With the play going on, it's usually a hold. We'll see here. Maybe they'll pick up a face mask penalty or a horse collar, I don't know. But those usually happen downfield when when, when they're when you're running downfield. I'm waiting for the call. Personal foul. Personal foul. It is a face mask against the defense. Wow. And that's against 34, and that's 
th that's no good from Hutchinson. I'll be honest with you. You you should not you should not get called for a face mask penalty if you are in on a one on one tackle like that, especially in the middle of the field. If you're downfield running, that's when you see a lot of those, and that's when you just accidentally grab it. But when you get called there, that's I'm not a fan of those. Comeback route to Harold Trainer. He makes the grab. Still in bounds on his feet. He makes it his way to the 45. Still on his feet. Moves backward. Might stop. Might place him at the uh, Hutchinson 47, rather the 45. Let's see where they give him. It will be another Triton first down. Trainer's a beast. Uh oh. Penalty marker in the backfield. This is coming back. Expect either illegal touching. A holding call, it's holding offense. on the offense. Holding against the offense, number 75. Uh, and that's Dodge Sasser, who went out earlier with an injury. I thought he was holding at his hand from earlier. He'll get holding called against him, a loss of 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, the previous spot. First in 20 now. The Tritons lose that gain of 25. And here comes a false start. And now we've gone four plays in a row, four penalties in a row. Eight minutes and 40 seconds will remain in the third quarter. Offsides, late reaction. Five yards, Five yards from the previous spot. Remains first down, but it's first and 15. First and 15, ball on the Triton 36. Eight and a half minutes remain. Twins right, lone receiver. Oh, no, make that doubles left. In the pistol, going on three, back to pass, looking long. Running Texas. Rolling right over the middle of the field. Got a jump for it. What a grab from Mario Sanders. Start and a hit Netflix show from Minnesota. And oh my gosh, look how far back they're bringing the ball. Oh my goodness. Not going to get him from the point of reception. Wow. They're saying he ran with the ball when he was coming down. Ain't no way. That's the first call where I'm a little iffy on. Otherwise, everything else today, I uh, great call, great work from the referees. But that one is a first, I don't know. Uh, doesn't matter, Tritons pick it up anyway off a deep slam. First and 10, Iowa Central placed at the 45 yard line. And this is a familiar ter territory. This is right where uh, Harold Trainer made that catch from earlier. That was called back from the uh, Holding against the 75 on offense. Halfback draw, moving up the gut. On his feet, Washington. Look at how many times he spins. I mean, if you play football, you hear your peewee coaches, you hear your middle school, high school, all those coaches say never stop moving your feet. And that is the epitome of who Washington is. I can't believe how many times he spins. <laughs> he just spins and spins and spins all over again. It works. Gain of six yards. It's second and four on the 39-yard line. A man in motion. Barlotta goes and swing. Wide open. Oh, no. It's picked off. Oh, no. Oh, no. Two Tritons open. One defender in the zone, and it's picked off once again by the number five on back-to-back -back drives. Oh, my goodness. That was a touchdown. That was a touchdown. Oh my gosh. He might have picked that off with his eyes closed. He didn't have to do much with it there. Oh, that hurts. Ryan Nolan again gets the interception. First and 10 now for Hutchinson. And pressure breaks two tackles, moves forward, can't break another. Uh, quarterback scramble, gain of two, maybe three. And they'll give him three. It'll be a second and seven. Six and a half minutes remain in the third quarter. Tritons are shooting themselves in the foot at the time they can't be. 
They're down by 15. It's 17-2. Uh, Hutchinson has the lead. And now they have the ball. Twins on each side. Tritons with no deep safety. Oh, wow. Swing pass. Quarterback draw. Moving up the middle of the field. This is just how they scored from their last possession. And again, another pickup of near 20 yards. Dan Knutson on, on the tackle. <clears throat> another Hutch first down. Five minutes, 45 seconds remain. First and 10 for the Blue Dragons. In the pistol. Tight end in the set to the weak side of the quarterback. Doubles right. Lone receiver left. Look at Colvin Miller. You see the way that he's pouncing like a puma on the line? That's going to draw the offensive line offside with a false start. It's against 77, their star right tackle. Let's see. Joshua Robinson of St. Louis, Missouri. That was all Colvin Miller. Wasn't a hard count that he messed up. It was Colvin Miller once again pouncing at the line of scrimmage, which is legal, makes the offensive line jump. First and 15 on the 41, five minutes, 20 seconds remain. From the pistol, doubles on each side, handoff up the gut. A gain of six, uh oh, some shoving. And some refs break it up. And not enough seen to call for a personal foul. Uh, coaching staff of Hutchinson is not happy. Primarily at the referees. Second and 11, 445. In the gun. Doubles left. Uh, there's a handoff to the 33. His first carry of the game. That's Wayman Jordan of Penascola, Florida. Another gain of just a few. Here comes a third and eight. Need a defensive stand here with four minutes and 15 seconds to play in the third quarter. Triton's down 15, 17 2. In the gun, bunched trips. See how close they are to that right tackle. And they're going to run the scat route. Uh, oh, they can't get him down. Flip to a wide open receiver who have more than enough for a gain of 10, 15, about 17 yards. First reception of the day for the number seven, uh, Jakari Foster. No, correction, that's Tristan Smith of LaGrange, Georgia. Well, these guys got two number sevens on the roster. It's Grange Smith. Three and a half minutes remain. First and 10 for Hutchinson at the 33 yard line. From the gun, very similar formation from what we saw a moment ago. Bunch trips, now it's to the weak side. Uh, read option, I don't even know who has the ball. Ended up in the hands of the tailback and they'll call the play dead after three Triton surrounded them. And bullied them into a corner. A loss of three makes a second and 13. Colbin Miller was there first. Loss of three on the play brings up second and 13. Brings up second and 13. Ball on the 36. Two minutes, 45 seconds remain. Hutchinson has twin receivers on both sides. Now they're split out. Back to pass. Oh, play's called dead. This should be on the offense. They'd give him a free play if not. Should be against the offense. Well, they're talking it over still. Who knows? False start. start on the offense, yep. That'll be against the slot receiver on the weak side of the plane. Uh, number zero. That's Oren Singleton, who leads the team in receptions today with four. Second and 18, ball on the 41-yard line. Two minutes, 35 seconds remain. Second down and 18. 
Pistol, heavy on the weak side. Doubles with a slot receiver. And swallowed up for a loss of one, maybe two. Here comes a third and 20. Brandon Peters was in on the tackle, his second solo tackle of the day. There goes that Triton sideline. Going crazy again. Oh, they call it a loss of three, so that makes a third and 20. No, it was a loss of one. Brownie, God love him, our PA man, had that one a little messed up there. Third 19, a minute, 40 seconds remain. Back to pass, stepping up in the pocket. There he goes, run in. Knutson is there first on the tackle. Uh, gain of seven will be fourth and 12. And they're yelling field goal on the sideline. Oh, my gosh. No, you can't. No. You can't make this. Triton's put up a safe man. So this is a so this is a 58 yard field goal including the end zone 58 yard field goal My goodness this is a deep one if he sinks this Oh ping with a rattle <laughs> Wow Not all field goals are climatic but that one was Right off that front hedge. First and 10, Triton's off the missed field goal. Triton's take over with another opportunity to score. Coming up with a stop. And technically, excuse me, technically because there was a play that uh, Hutchinson was in the red zone just for one play. That's still a red zone stop. So the second of the season. In the second of today that the Tritons have put up. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. First and 10, ball on the 36, 53 seconds remain. Uh, the power pistol. Oh, wait, look at Barlotta now. Two-point stance to the right hip. Oh, and wrapped in the backfield. That's another face mask. I saw it that time. Now, I'm going to say this. Don't take it the wrong way, but it's starting to get dirty on the field with the tackling in the backfield from Hutchinson. You can't be, you can't be tackling that high in the backfield. You cannot be. So 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. And many reasons why you can't do that, because for one, you'll be called for face masks just like that. For two, it's not safe at all. I mean, with an opera, with a risk of taking a helmet off a ball carrier, having them leave the game for one play, increases the injury risk. I, I don't like that. First and 10 from the 49 on the Hutch side. Tritons have the ball on offense. 40 seconds remain, empty backfield. Doubles left. Trips right, back to pass. Middle of the field, fire, picked off again. The third interception by Ryland Nolan. He's on his feet, he's running, looking for a pick six. Brought down by the number three. That is the third interception from Ryland Nolan. And guess what? All three of them have came in the third quarter. First and 10. Hutchinson goes back to the Triton red zone, set up on their own 16. <clears throat> and that last pass just left him hanging up there a little too long. Nolan was back deep in the zone in a in a sky zone. Another interception. Like I said, third of the quarter. Here comes the offense of Hutchinson set up in the Cadillac. Handoff. Outside, he's running on his feet. Got some running room. Going to have a gain of five. Brought down by the two. Aaron Warren. Aaron Warren with the stop from Triton. 
Second and five, we have just five seconds remaining in this third quarter. That should be the last play of the quarter. And it is 17-2, Hutchinson leads, we'll switch sides. And we're about to see a second and four from the 10 yard line. Heading to the final and fourth quarter today in this top five matchup. It's number one versus number five, Hutchinson versus Iowa Central. We'll be back with the play-by-play -play after this on Triton Nation. Back live from the broadcast booth. Hank Ambrose with you to begin the fourth quarter. Second and four from the 10 yard line. Hutchinson is in the red zone for the third time today. Hutchinson has yet to score for, uh, make that the fourth time. They have scored one time from the red zone. Take that back. In the Cadillac, stepping back to pass. A wheel route, wide open man. Incomplete pass from Courier. The junior right out of his hands. Third and four, staying on the 10 yard line. Just four seconds into the fourth quarter, 17-2. It's 17-2, Hutchinson has a lead by 15. Back to the gun. Trips on a line to the weak side of the field. No receiver on the right side. Tight end in the package as well. Lined up next to the left tackle. Quarterback draw. Direct snap. And that's a little bit out of where I can see him. Looks like he's going to be short. A yard or two short. And he is short. Brings up a fourth and two. Here comes... The field goal unit for the third time today. Make that third time? No. Make that the fourth time today. Seagreaves is one for three kicking field goals. Here's his fourth attempt. And this one is going to be about 25 yards. It's up, and it's good. 22, 14 minutes and five seconds remain in the fourth and final quarter to play. Tritons got to make the most of it. Let's see how they'll respond right after this break on Triton Nation. Well done. Yeah, it's 22 is the score. Burger to kick off for the Blue Dragon. <clears throat> Triton Nation, we resume to the contest. 14 minutes, six seconds remain. Harold Trainer and Mario Sanders back deep to return this kickoff from the seven yard line where they're standing on. Sky kick back back towards Trainer with his heels on the end zone. He'll return it. Getting to the 15, the 20, spin move, 
He'll make his way to the Triton 23 yard line. All right, folks. Last three possessions in a row, we've seen an interception made by Ryland Nolan. Starting to play like a broken record. Tritons have been good at moving the ball from the third quarter, actually, or actually all throughout today. They just haven't been able to execute. And now they bring on a new quarterback. I believe this is Trevon Taylor, a redshirt freshman of West Palm Beach, Florida. He'll fire from his first play from the gun. Oh, my gosh, almost caught. And Tritons again wanting a defensive pass interference, not going to get it. And it is Trevon Taylor. 22, 13 minutes and 53 seconds remain in the fourth quarter. With a switch up at quarterback, I don't know. This could change everything. In the gun, twins on each side. Firing to the curl route, short of the line of gain. Should be good for at least five. Uh, pass to Mario Sanders. Oh, and they're just going to give him a short three yards. Doesn't get the five. Third and seven from the 26. 13 and a half minutes remain. Triton's down by 18. Two touchdowns, two two-point conversions, and a field goal would give the Tritons a lead. But that's a lot of ground to cover in just 13 minutes and 10 seconds to go in the fourth. Trips right, two receivers left, empty backfield. Got him to jump, free play, free play. Throw it up, throw it up. Here it comes, coming in. Oh, Mario! If he just had another yard in front of him, he would have had that free play score touchdown. That one stings. Offside on the defense. Five yards from the previous spot. We'll replay third down. Here's a third and two from the 31 yard line. Okay, third and two. You had the receivers beat from the last play. You come out in the same formation. You may be thinking that this is the same play we saw a moment ago. No, man in motion. Sanders, oh, muff snap. We can't have a muff snap there. You can't have a muff snap on a third and two. I mean, that is the spot you can't have a muff snap. Take one at a first and goal. Take one at a second and ten. But there on a third down and two, Triton's execution has not been here in the second half. Fourth and nine. Twelve and a half minutes remain, and the Tritons come out to punt, uh, showing eight men on the line of scrimmage, sending them. Uh, here's a punt back to the 39. Return, pass a 50 to the 45, 40, 35, 30. Uh, actually just shy of the 30-yard li uh, line. Return by the number six. That's Trey Richardson on the return, a gain of about 25 yards. First and 10, Hutchinson. Another great field position in the second half. Looking to get a score. <clears throat> First and 10, Hutchinson heads back onto the field. In the gun. Trips are stacked to the strong side and a lone receiver's left. A receiver that hasn't played yet today, the number 15. That's Blake Durham. And they do run the ball. Halfback slash taking just inside the right tackle. It's where you're acting like you're going on the end around or an off tackle, but you just sneak inside. Gain a one. Tackled by Eli West. Here's a second and nine from the 29. Oh. 
Triton's showing somewhat similar of a goal line package here. Sending the blitz. Doesn't get there. Gonna have another gain of chump change. Three or four yards. Demeyer Shaw on the carry. Demeyer Shaw on the carry. Makes a third and five. Tackled by Xavier Reese. 11 minutes and 15 seconds remain. Ball on the 25 yard line. Another trip to the Triton red zone. Officially starts now for Hutchinson. In the gun, doubles, inside zone, handoff running on his feet. Uh, wow, that's going to be close. It's a very important spot here. I don't know where they'll place this. Short by just two yards, fourth and two. Hutchinson appears to be going for it, at least putting on a hard count. This has to be your best defensive play this quarter. Fourth and two on the 22, 10-25 on the clock. You're down by 18 points. Triton defense, we need you here. In the gun, back to pass, firing. No, not firing, on his feet, he's running to the end zone. Deflected, turnover on downs. Pass is incomplete. Holds. Turnover on downs, the Triton's defense holds. I. I don't mind that last play call from Hutchinson. Do not like the decision from Collier. I think he had some room to run. And uh, he's shown he can break some tackles, evade some tacklers. That brings up a turnover on downs and gives Iowa Central another shot. A big Iowa Central chant from Triton Nation on the home stands. 10 minutes, 11 seconds on the clock, down 18. Trevon Taylor returns as the quarterback for Iowa Central in the gun. Barlotta in as a weak side flex. He'll go with a curl route, thrown over to Sanders. Sanders gets out of bounds. Gain of 10. <clears throat> Monday made the, well, I, I don't want to call him a tackle, but forced him out of bounds. Tritons pick up a first down from that play. First and 10 from the 34 yard line. In the gun, Bartolotta in as a blocker. A handoff with an inside zone. Trying to open up that pass game. Comes a second down and eight. And off Gabriel Hilliard. Hilliard on the last carry. Second and eight, nine minutes, 40 seconds remain. In the pistol, doubles right, receiver left. Quarterback keeper uh, Taylor trips up. Taylor with the keeper. Hell of a loss of like four yards. Five, yard loss. Five yards, four yards, somewhere in there. Third down and 12. From the 30. Two yard line. Pistol. Twins on each side. And we got rain starting to fall down. That's going to hurt the passing game. Speaking of pass, stepping up and tackled uh, before the line of scrimmage. Another sack from the five rushers. Loss of another five makes a fourth and 17. Try and show punt. Eight minutes and 40 seconds to play. Cola Miller in punt formation. Trey Richardson dropping back deep for Hutchinson. Trey Richardson is the return man back deep. Colvin Miller is the punter. Fourth and 17, and rain is coming down. Luckily for me, I'm in a tent. A step right and a big punt, booting all the way to the 25, 23, the return. Jukes two, four, six, still on his feet. Almost juked another, brought down by <clears throat> one of our Richard flex Smith tight ends, Smith. Ethan John. Tyler Smith with the special teams tackle. First and 10 the 43 for the Blue Dragons. First and 10 from the 43 for the Blue Dragons.
Before we resume the play-by-play, I'd like to thank our sponsors of the broadcast again. Thank you to CNOS, Rash Construction of Vela Bank, Mark Sotomart, CJ Bile. Uh, keeping it here live, timeout called. But yeah, once again, thank you to our sponsors of the broadcast, not just today, but all season long. To the folks out at CNOS, Rash Construction, Avila Bank, Mark's Automart, CJ Bio of America. Eight minutes and four seconds remain on the clock. Blue Dragons going to have another possession this fourth quarter. You know, Final score from Triton's. Oh, got some junior college updates. Hang on. Iowa Western defeated Garden City. They'll stay undefeated on the season. Garden City now has two losses, both to Iowa teams. Uh, well, I got you here. I ought to go and find uh, some of the updates for some more college football. College football score updates. Just one second. I'm getting there pulled up. Uh, Penn State walloped over Delaware and former Triton quarterback Zach Marker, who's starting over there for them 63-7 in the fourth quarter. Sam Hartman in Notre Dame leads North Carolina State 10-0 in the second quarter. Tied up between the 12th-ranked Utah Utes and Baylor, 13 apiece. Kansas State beat Troy 42-13. Colorado's beat Nebraska 36-7 with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Ohio State is beating Young, Youngstown State 30 uh, beat Excuse me, it's officially over. Ohio State beat Youngstown State 35-7. Georgia is beating Ball State 45-3. Uh, Clemson may be upset, ranked at 25. They're taking on Charleston Southern. It's 21-14. Some more rain coming down. Looks like it might have stopped. And the Iowa State-Iowa football game is set to kick off in about nine minutes. Eight minutes, four seconds remain. Got a line trips over to the strong side of the field. Inside zone from the timeout. Oh, did the ball come free? Oh, a Triton ended up with the ball, but they called him down, unfortunately. On the near fumble would have been Kelton Reed. Jordan on the carry. Jordan on the carry. Pick up a seven. Here's a second and three. Reed with the stop. Seven minutes, 35 seconds remain. Ball on the 50-yard line. Back to pass from the gun. Sending four receivers. Make that five from the swing pass to John. A swing pass complete. Picks up another first down. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remain for Hutchinson. On offense, crossing the 50, and now marked with the first and 10 on the 42-yard line. Cadillac formation, doubles right, lone receiver left. Terrier handoff inside, moving, looking up, middle of the field, still breaking his way outside. A great carry from the 29. On the carry there was Tyrell Reed, Jr. Stopped by, Warren. Stopped by Warren. First and 10 at the Triton 25-yard line. Again, they end up in the Triton red zone. I think this is their seventh trip now. It's 22. Six minutes and 20 seconds remain in this fourth quarter. Pistol look, heavy to the left. Doubles are spread wide to the left. Uh, Halfback, outside, carry. run. Stretching it out, makes his way. Shy of the first down marker. Awfully close. Saywan just made the tackle. Second and five. Second and four. 5.45 remains in this fourth quarter. Back in the Cadillac. 
Handoff inside zone with a read. Uh, Reed is on the tackle with 49 getting his first tackle of the day for Iowa Central. That's Ryan Russo, a, f a true freshman linebacker. Samuel on the stop. Here comes a third down and one now. Third and one, third and one. from the gun. Heavy on the strong side with a split tight end. Doubles right, spread apart. Free play to the end zone. That's going to be a touchdown. That's complete for the touchdown. 16 yard receiving touchdown from a fade route to the number seven. There's a penalty marker on the play. Should be a touchdown for Tristan Smith unless, unless they call for a hold on what already was a false start. Yeah, it's off the, offsides on the defense. Tristan Smith gets on the box score with a touchdown. Twenty-six two is the score. Here comes a PAT. This will make it a four-possession ball game, and should wrap things up. Kick is up, and it's good through the upright. Makes the score 27-2. What a strange score, 27-2. 4.55 remains in the fourth quarter. We'll take a break and be right back to see the Tritons return the kickoff once more on Triton Nation. Triton fans, we're back to the broadcast. Triton Nation's YouTube channel. Turn on push notifications and subscribe if you're a fan of Triton Sports. We live stream all home athletics, men's and women's soccer, volleyball, uh, rugby, and of course, Iowa Central football all throughout the fall sports season. Here's Harold Trainer with a kickoff return to the near 30 yard line. Four minutes and 45 seconds remain. First and 10 for Iowa Central. They got some, uh, they have Trayvon Taylor in at quarterback, filling in for Justin Silverstein. By Javon Nelson. Who's benched after he threw three interceptions in that third quarter. I, I, I hope Justin doesn't hang his head after this one. Great player, great guy, great athlete. Leads the uh, entire nation heading into the game today with seven passing touchdowns. May not come up with any today, but he's a heck of a ball player for Iowa Central. Empty backfield, Trevon Taylor stands alone. Trips to his weak side, doubles to his right. 27-2, we got a four possession ball game. With under five minutes to go, here is the pass and catch. And the yards after catch brought in from the number three, Lorenz Lacking. 4.5 minutes remain. Four and a half minutes remain. Staying with an empty backfield. Oh, false start against the offense. Right on right tackle, 73. It's against Jackson Herinja. Here comes a 
first and 15 from the 40 yard line. Four minutes and 15 seconds remain. Empty backfield, trips left, doubles right, back to pass. Firing short for Sanders. Sanders makes up what they lost a moment ago and picks up an extra five. A gain of 11. Here comes a second and four now. After the gain of 11, under four minutes to go. Triton's down by 25. Tritons with an empty backfield. Twins right, triplets to the left. Looking left, firing over the middle, Bartolotta, who has one catch today, drops that one. Makes a third and four. Three minutes and 34 seconds remain in the fourth quarter. It's a third down and four. Here we go. Trips left, doubles right. Empty backfield. Back to pass, stepping up to avoid the pressure. Ended up running into some D tackles. And a flag is thrown. Looks like it's during the tackle. You know, might be calling for a, another face mask. Or a horse collar. Yep, personal foul, defense face mask against the defense. First 15 yards and a 15. First down. Oh. Yeah, 15 yards and a first down. Three minutes, 30 seconds remain. Never say never. We got a time to have some last minute heroics. Soften the blow. Empty backfield. Man in motion is Sanders. Sanders takes a jet sweep, headed outside, finds a block, picks up six. Should be a pick of a six. And here comes a placement. Yep. Second and four from the 27 yard line. Ticking under three minutes to play now. Four receivers on the right side. Expect a motion. There's Sanders. Moves it inside. Wide receiver screen. Bartolotta tries to take a slip screen. He'll be tackled for a gain of nothing. Possibly a loss of one. Uh, and they'll keep it right at a four to go. So third and four on the 27. 215 remains. <clears throat> Excuse me. Three on the weak side, doubles to the right, empty backfield again. Back to pass, looking short, Sanders, oh, bobbled the ball, but ended up making the catch on the second effort. Did he make enough to move the chains? Oh, they call it incomplete, yeah. I, you know, I better view than I do from up here in the booth. And because of that bobble, that's what's going to hurt him as he came down with the ball. Fourth and five from the 27. 145 remain. Here we go, Tritons. Empty backfield. Trips left. Twins right. Back to pass, firing short. Sanders makes the grab and oh, tried moving forward. Looks like he'll be, sh will he be short? Here's pass complete to Sanders. Might be in inches. I think they're going to play some short. <coughs> it's going to be a close call. 
And the ruling on the field is a first down. First and 10. First and 10 from the 22. Minute and 20 seconds remain. Trips left, doubles right. With an empty backfield, it's the call here. And the ruling under field will be under further review. Let's go ahead and take a timeout with them. We'll return after a decision is made. A minute and 20 seconds remain in the fourth quarter. I'm Hank Ambrose for play-by-play -play duties on Triton Nation. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons. Straight Nation, I'd like to thank more of our sponsors. The broadcast once more, CNOS, Rash Construction, Avela Bank, Marks Automart, CJ Bio of America. Thank you for sponsoring the broadcast, not just today, but all season long supporting our Triton athletes. Also, uh, stay tuned. This evening we'll be posting the Marks Automart Triton Tailgate Show to the same YouTube channel. You're listening and watching the game two on right now. Uh, and while you're at it, might as well turn on push notifications and subscribe to be updated whenever Triton Nation goes live or has a new video out. First and 10, under review is a, rule, uh, is a spot on the field. It's either going to be a first down conversion or a turnover on downs. So it's a big play here, but knowing the score is 27-2, Blue Dragons have the lead, you know, I. You know, <laughs> still looking it over. And, w you know, we've gotten to a point where we've gone so long that with this review, I would think that there's just going to be an outcome of too tough to tell, you know. We're still checking it out. Tritons are marching, won their first touchdown of the day. Two minutes, 37 seconds remain. Let's see if I can pull some, oh wait. Looks like they're returning to the field. Here we go, here we go. Ruling on the field. Stands. First and 10 and Hutchinson. Hutchinson is charged with a timeout. First and 10, minute 20 seconds remain. Putting together one final drive of the day for Iowa Central. Trips left, doubles right. We've seen it all drive long with an empty backfield. The Lone Ranger, Trevin Taylor, steps up looking for the end zone. Fires, picked off, interception. That time it's picked off by the number 10. Intercepted by DeMonte Gaston. Four interceptions for the Blue Dragon defense in the second half alone. That makes for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six turnovers that uh, Hutchinson has forced today. They'll come out in victory formation to take a knee. 
And uh, this is, of course, not the outcome that Iowa Central is wanting today, but a hard-fought battle, a top-five matchup today, the matchup of the week in NJCAA football between number five and number one. This shows where the Tritons are at and where they need to improve on. I'll be honest with you, despite not having the lead after the first half, I do believe that the Tritons played better than Hutchinson in the first half. Second half, no execution from either side of the ball, and it was just Blue Dragons all the way in that second half. Uh, it definitely helped knowing they came away with four interceptions. I got to say my player of the game comes down to Hutchinson's own Ryland Nolan, who had three interceptions in the third quarter alone. Congratulations to Hutchinson. They should be very proud of themselves after a big win, getting their first ranked win of the season. Iowa Central Tritons' next matchup will be... Uh, Iowa Central's next matchup will be on the road at Ellsworth Community College next week. Not going to be home until their homecoming game on October 7th versus Coffeyville, which just so happens to be a night game for a 7 p.m. kickoff. That's going to be it for me in the booth. I'd like to thank all involved in the production for making this broadcast possible, as well as all involved for getting together between the Tritons and the Hutchinson. All parties should be involved in this one. It was a hard-fought battle with some of the best teams in the nation going at it against each other. Till next time, you enjoy your weekend full, filled with football. Have fun. Stay safe. I'm Hank Ambrose for Triton Sports right here on Triton Nation.